As we know, a critical feature of all cells is that they can um, divide or reproduce, replicate, using their own resources. So that's referring to their own genetic material and information. It's referring to using their own energy, their own molecules in order to make this division process happen. We're going to specifically talk about eukaryotic cell division. which is um, part of what we call the eukaryotic cell cycle. It includes division. So the cell cycle, if we just think of it overall, we're going to have a cell with DNA in it. We're going to want to divide the cell. So in order to divide it to make two new cells that are the same, we're going to have to copy the DNA. Then we're going to split that DNA and divide the cells in half. So each ends up with a copy of the DNA. So we copy the DNA. We're going to divide the DNA, or eukaryotic cells. This is going to be the nucleus that contains the DNA. Then we're going to divide the cell, or the cytoplasm, and end up with two new cells. And these cells are called daughter cells. There's two of them. And daughter doesn't have to, ref it's not referring to male or female. That's just what we call any cells coming from a division. And they are identical to each other. So their genetics are identical if everything goes properly. Let's just write some parts of the cell cycle. So this copying DNA we'll see in a moment is called S phase. This division of the nucleus is mitosis and this division of the cell is cytokinesis. And let me label here that this is the chromosome or a chromosome. Really, we're looking at the whole genome. So it would be many chromosomes in a eukaryotic cell. I'm not drawing the portions of the cell cycle um, in their, how long they actually take. So like, just because one is a bigger piece of the pie doesn't mean it actually takes longer. This is just a schematic here. After cells divide, then you're just starting fresh with the new cell. So when you have a new cell after division, it's in what we call G1. The G is, stands for gap, and that just comes from the fact when they first observed cells under the microscope, it looked like they were in a gap phase when they were doing nothing, uh, so that's why they called it G. Uh, it turns out they're actually doing everything <laughs> except for dividing, so it's not really, it's not a dormant stage or anything like that, but we still do call it G1. So this is the first gap stage. So the important things that are happening in G1 is that the cell is growing. This makes sense because it's just divided, so it's got to get back to its normal size. And it's making copies of the cell parts, including organelles. And it's basically just doing its regular cell processes. If the cell gets through G1 and the conditions are right, it will go into what we call S phase. S stands for synthesis, which is referring to uh, making or building. To synthesize something means to make or build. And that's referring in this case to building new DNA. So this is when the DNA is copied in S phase. So like when I was drawing that before, it's going from one copy now to having a duplicate partner of the chromosome. So each chromosome is copied. And then we get to 
if the signals are right, G2 or gap two, and we can just generally describe that as get ready to divide. All three of these phases together are what we call interphase. Inter means between, and it's not really between phases, it's just between cell divisions. And just also remember that cell division isn't the be all end all. It's just that when we're looking at the cell cycle, often we're focusing on, you know, the division part of it. And so then we have interphase that's in between the divisions. So we can think of the cell does everything except dividing. in interface. And that's the G1, S, G2, and then what I'm going to draw in a moment, G0. If the cell gets through G2 and the signals are right, it's going to go into what we're going to call M phase. which I'm going to split up into multiple phases, which is why I'm not writing the M in the pi. So M phase is uh, two parts. The mitosis part, which is the nucleus dividing, nuclear division. And then the second part here, which overlaps, is cytokinesis, which is the cell dividing, like the actual physical cell. I'm going to change this to nucleus, not nuclear, uh, it, just so it's the cell dividing, the nucleus dividing. Okay, and then let's look at the parts of M phase. So we're going to divide it into, I'm going to actually do a, a sort of additional part here compared to the book. So I'm going to divide it into five. So first we have what we call prophase. And I'll talk about each of these in more detail in another lecture. But for, prophase is first. Pro means before. It's not actually before the phases, but it is the first one. Then we have what we call prometaphase, which is indeed between prophase and metaphase, and it's before metaphase. So that's next, metaphase. Then we have anaphase. And we have telophase or telophase, and cytokinesis, overlapping. And then the cells end up as two new cells, two daughter cells, and they go into G1. Each of them would go into G1. So this would be a G1 of that cell cycle now. The last part of this is this little side thing uh, over here. So this is G0, as I alluded to before. Not O, like the letter, it's the number. And G0 is where actually most body cells are in. So most adult cells are in G0, doing their day-to-day -day stuff. Basically, this is a non-dividing state. So if the cells are not called into the cell cycle, then they'll be in G0. But it does all its other stuff. So I'm going to say all other jobs. That means all the other jobs are going on. Now the reason that I have this dotted line here instead of just a cycle line, is because um, some cells can be called back from G0 and some stay stuck there. So some cells stay in G0 forever. So particularly like in humans, muscle cells, neurons. And this actually is a consequence is that uh, it makes damage hard to repair because those cells can't divide after they're damaged. So we don't really, um, we get, we have stem cells that can replace those 
uh, cells in the population, but not really damaged ones as well as other cells. So like intestine cells or skin cells, they'll easily get called back from G0 into G1 and then go divide and repair your wound. So other cells can get called back into the cell cycle. So we'll say call back to G1. And those are the basics of the eukaryotic cell cycle.